So I said, don't take the elevator, take the stairs. So he runs down the stairs. So he goes running out the apartment. But before he leaves the apartment, he turns around, he say, yo, when I get that hammer though, what you want me to do? You want me to give it to them? I said, to push my new movie that I got out. You heard called Body Parts, the story of turquoise serial killer in the projects, a true crime story. You heard it's an hour and a half long and it's exclusively on Patreon. So I need y'all true Gen Pop supporters to come over to the link that's in the description of this video and come watch that movie because it's exclusive, bruh. You heard it's so exclusive, I couldn't just drop it on YouTube. Join that Patreon, get all that exclusive music. You heard straight downloads to your phone, some of the best songs I ever made in my life. Some of the best songs you might have ever heard in your life. And that's a fact, because I do this rap thing for real, for real. You're Z-Boy, holla at me. They caught this nigga stealing one time, right? They got all the little niggas that was in the game room, brought us in the fucking crib, so we don't know what the fuck is going on. All I know is them big Jamaican pots, them shits is on the stove, balling. Get a crackhead nigga in the back, they beating on him, he hollering, he butt ass nigga. That nigga say, yo, this what happened, niggas that violate us, yo. That's exclusive knowledge when you was talking about, um, um, you was, you was, yeah, you was getting that 80% off on straight yeah. low gooses and dudes oh, was just copping up. Nigga. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Bro, ain't no just low. Everything in the store, my nigga. Mm. If you, if you didn't work for Saks Fifth Avenue, like, you know, I Macy's to be 10%, 20%, 30%. All right, cool. Say for instance, they say 30%. That's just for the employee. I mean, the people that's coming in patronizing the store. But if you work for the motherfucking store, you dig what I'm saying? You get the 30 and the 30. Call a double discount because of the employee. Yo, listen to me, bro. I had the hot top. Um, they look like Gucci boots. I had the hot top green Prada boots. I had the hot top black Prada boots. And I had the powder North Carolina blue low top Prada shoes. How much do I pay for all three of them? Mm. This is 96, bro. $214.33. Bitches looking at me like I'm Wonder Man. You dig what I'm saying? Them shit was 450, my nigga. You dig what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm on the seventh floor. They called the police on me. No, they didn't call the police on me. That's a lie. They called the head of security on me from downstairs. But his name is Mario, a Spanish dude. I goes over to the lady. Um, I said, can I use your phone? She just said the cold, disrespectful shit to me. First of all, this isn't a, this isn't a free phone. This isn't a pay phone. The pay phones are downstairs, sir. I said, no, ma'am. I said, I wanted to call my mother. She said, I just told you this isn't a free phone. I said, would you do me a favor and would you dial extension 5636? The lady face literally fell off her face. She was like, what do you mean? I said, would you dial extension 5636? My mother works in a corporate building across the street. I actually said, excuse me. I picks the phone up. She lets me down. I said, yo, ma, do me a favor. Come over to the low house. I know what I got. Because this used to tell me. I'm not walking around in that motherfucking store. Go over there, get what you want. Put it together and call me. Because only she could get the discounts, not me. When my mom walks into the motherfucking polo department, the lady that was running the store said, Sharon, how are you doing? She said, I'm sitting here waiting for my son. I said, I told you. The lady looks at my mother and says, I'm so sorry. She said, I called Mario and them. They're getting ready to come up. The minute she said that, Mario comes off the elevator through the back. He didn't even know my mother worked there, bro. I'm all like, what the fuck am I gonna come and ask you to use your phone for? Like, that don't even make no motherfucking sense. She said, Sharon, I didn't know that was your son. She said, yeah, that's my son. Why? What happened? She said, I'm so sorry. The lady called motherfucking security on me, man. <laughs> Why? Because they saw you were mad because you had mad, you had mad garments? No, what it is is I had, um, I don't know if you remember the, like, yeah, you gotta remember this. You know the regular um, polo jacket with the blue horse? It was beige with a blue horse. The, like, thin jacket, like, the like the, the mm -hmm. golf jacket. Mm -hmm. I had two, I had two shirts and a polo scarf. i never forget because it was a scuba scarf. My mom said, what you want this scarf for? It was a, no, it was a burgundy terry cloth polo scarf with the green horse, because green is my favorite color. Forest green is my favorite color. That's why I wanted it. Yeah, a lot of the so-called low lifes, they didn't take their first low goose. They paid for it. From Miss McLean. 
My mom's coming down Utica Avenue with the polo gooses and the Saxon Avenue coat hanging like this. You know the clothes and things they just put around? Yeah, niggas got their logos coming to the house. My grandmother's name is Ethel Sanders. She was selling guns from 58 Mar 10th Street in Flatbush. Ask about her. That's a fact. Her grandson named Terry Saunders. He's in jail for the rest of his life. He, he, he was responsible for one of the biggest check cash and heists. I think that was 1992. I can call my cousin Shawana in Flatbush, him and his man. That's when the 91 um, four runners came out because he had the burgundy one, his man had the black one. Yeah. His brother named Raymond Sanders was killed by the police behind Vanderveer Projects. They shot him in his back because they thought he was pulling the gun, but my cousin was actually pulling out his burglar tools. He was pulling out his tools. He was running because my cousin was a burglar. My grandmother got a little bit of money over there. My grandmother was bringing guns back and forth from Chicago since she was about maybe 35 years old. Ethel Sanders. You know what else is another story that needs to be told on this channel? And I know it's going to be like a trilogy. That DCEP and VIP war. Vanderveer when it was a point in time in Erasmus. I don't know about in the whole Brooklyn. Oh, now, see, now let me tell you something. Now see, now I heard what you just said. When you said Erasmus, because the nigga special ed was DCEP. Erasmus Hall had their own chapter. Them niggas was beefing with each other already. They ain't had nothing to do with DSAP. That was Flatbush niggas that didn't like each other. That's all that was. That didn't have nothing to that had nothing to do with DSAP. That was just Flatbush niggas. Alright, put it like this. Say for instance, um You talking about beefing with VIP with niggas from Vanderville? Yeah, I stayed in Vanderville. I stayed for yeah, I stayed on um, New York between Farragut and Forster. That was the first apartment I had. Five hundred and thirty six dollars a month gas and electricity included why did i move there because i was a stupid animal that's why i moved there <laughs> that's why i moved there a fool a fool the shit was so fucked up they had muslim security how is that projects vanderveer like it's, it's not new, it's not new york city housing though it's like one of those private private projects right bro let me tell you something my nigga i don't know what the shit is all I know is my mom's co-signed the apartment for me and my baby mother. You know what I'm saying? We thought we was grown. Shit, 536 a month. I'm in there. I'm trapping. Can't tell me shit. I got that. My baby mother, she working for Starbright. She getting her change. My nigga, we went during the daytime. Like, you know how you got to do the walkthrough? Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm walking through Alcatraz, baby, outside. You dig what I'm saying? I'm like, baby, I'm just bugging out. So when we get inside the building, and then we actually get inside the apartment. I lived in 1401 New York between... 1401 New York between Farragut and Forster apartment 3B. When I come upstairs, my apartment is the apartment that's actually facing towards um, Vanderveer Park. So Vanderveer Park, if you know anything about Vanderveer Park back then, around the corner from Nostrand in New York, the wild, wild fucking west, my nigga. What, 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 year, what year? What year was this? This is 96. This is 96 because I stayed there for about seven months and then I moved to quote unquote I moved to Star Right City. I moved to 1230 Pennsylvania between 1230 Pennsylvania between on the corner of Pennsylvania and Vandalia. Right around the corner from the um Pathmark, Pathmark complex. Yeah, that Vanderbilt shit was disrespectful, brother. Very disrespectful, brother. <laughs> that was that shit was very you know, first of all, bro, I'm from Utica. You already said so this is my thing. My governing projects, as far as where my governing projects are, Albany projects, my stomping grounds, Kingboro, my stomping ground. And I can tell you a story about Shy and them. You dig what I'm saying? The Evelyn boys. But anyway, like, like these is my projects. And I guess maybe I, to somebody else coming inside of Albany projects, they'd be like, nigga, you crazy going in Albany. Or to somebody else coming in Kingsburg, because like from the first to the f first to the fourth walk, if I'm not mistaken, was blood. Yeah, from the fifth to the sixth walk was crit. You know what I'm saying? So, so niggas was like, yo, you crazy. Like, fuck you doing it? But let me tell you something, bro. That Van Der shit? <laughs> Nah, that shit you was say your window, say that shit. You say your window faced the, face the park? Exactly. My window, 3B is right on the corner, so check this out. This is how fucked up my window is. My bedroom window, like, looking straight out, faces the park. But, like, looking to the left, it's the dry, it's the it's the walkway coming in. The concrete. So everything is, yo, my nigga, you know what I mean? Nice nigga, I done fell out the bed, baby. Grabbing a pistol, thinking a nigga coming through my window. I'm on the third floor, bro. That's how close the shots is, baby. I'm scared to death, nigga. You understand what I'm saying to you? I said, no, we got to get out of here. Dudes is banging out in that park every night. Yo, listen to me, bro. Fuck the park. That was normal. 
I'm talking about Vanderbilt, right in the courtyard, bro. It was a dread out there by the name of Zion. If you ask anybody from that area that know, it was a dread named Zion. The nigga was in a wheelchair. His son used to always be with him. He used to sell a weed. The nigga lived, lived with three broads, three young girls. The nigga had aquariums in his in his crib. When he come in his crib, he had three fish tanks. The nigga was in a wheelchair, had the best chocolate. Him and a nigga named Jati, best chocolate, damn near. The best chocolate I ever smoked was Wood and Rockaway and Rutland, if you know anything about Quarberg, the green bags. Mm. Make a long story short, the nigga Zion was in a wheelchair. These niggas, I'm talking about this nigga had jewelry on his neck. This nigga had the um the original shepherd's piece. I'm talking about not that little shit niggas wearing. I'm talking about the big dumb shit from back in the days. This nigga's looking like he got a crane on his neck. These niggas get into a bang out in Vanderbilt. This nigga get up. You said he get it up. It wasn't that he was, yeah, he wasn't paralyzed. His left side was paralyzed. The nigga gets up, nigga, and start moving like he like he never was in that motherfucking chair, son. <laughs> Name is Zion, son. Old school dread nigga lived with three young girls. Word up. They just did a thing. Look it up. It's on YouTube. It, 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 it's a notorious gully man. They just did the, the bio on my nigga Barry, son. He just came home like a G. Nigga did 32 years, nigga. He just came home like a G. America's most wanted this story on my nigga. Like a G. The twins and all that shit. Them niggas is crazy. One of them being White Castles on Utica and Empire. I know the niggas that was cutting niggas up. Putting niggas in bags and taking them right to the motherfucking truck. They had the big... The niggas was paying off the sanitation department right there on Utica and Dean and Pacific. These is facts. These is facts. Niggas was getting murdered, cut. Yo, let me tell you something. When Barry and them niggas came to 1367 Sterling Place, Irene Court, they told Mr. Tilly, check this out, we want to buy the building. Mr. Tilly said, you ain't going to be doing that drug dealing shit. You'd never see Mr. Tilly again. This the case that they facts. This the case that they went to jail, that, they, that he did the time for? Yes, sir. We never see Mr. Tilly again. His brothers and them came up from out of town. Barry and them gave them an undisclosed amount of money. And ain't nobody in Irene Court paying rent for five years. Hmm. I'm talking about literally if you watch the movie yo you had to be there to understand this my nigga if you watch the movie New Jack City that corridor that they had in Harlem that was Irene Court when you first walk in cause it go to the left and then it go to the right when you first would walk in it'd be a nigga standing at the door either um Fitzy or Bonnetty or Devon God bless the day these niggas standing at the door with some motherfucking some, some, some assault rifle looking like like I said, a crossing guard or some shit. Then when you come inside, niggas be in the pump arm, right there in the hallway gambling. Then when you come to the first floor and go to the right, the coke spot was the left door. The weed spot was the right door. All the weight was sold on the top floor. The reason why they sold the weight on the top floor is because niggas used to be coming coming through and try to rob niggas. Like I was on the block guard that's the dead when 50 came and backed Barry down, stuck Barry up. If you look at the back of, the, this is facts I'm giving you, my nigga. If you look at the back of the paid and full album cover, with the real 50 cent, Kelvin Martin, my uncle man. He got a big ass motherfucking chain on his neck with a with a um lion panther face with rubies and diamonds. That's Barry Chain. I was there when he stuck Barry, but two niggas died that day too. A nigga died on Utica and motherfucking park, I mean, excuse me, on Schenectady and Park, and a nigga died on motherfucking park, park place between Schenectady and Albany. Yeah, 50 got away, but his man's died. He got Barry Chain on the back of that album cover, son. That's the fact. I was right there. It was Labor Day. Because the niggas, they had a sound system over there called King Addies. If you're into the reggae shit, King Addies. A nigga that played for them was a dude by the name of... You know what I'm saying? He was pussy. They call him a... Now, if you look at all that bullshit. Then it switched to that, I mean, to um, a nigga by the name of Tony Mataran. But the nigga that really controlled the set was a dread by the name of Donnie Blood Clyde Dread. These niggas was all murderers. You see the nigga Louis Rankin? Mm hmm The nigga from um from Belly? Mm-hmm. The nigga that they had to shoot out doing half shit. Yeah. That nigga used to smoke crack. That nigga used to be on Connected and Sterling. They used to smoke that nigga used to smoke crack. Man, my mother get kicked out of heaven if I'm lying to you. Back in the days, the top Jamaicans used to smoke crack and weed, my nigga. They used to call them rulers. Dare you and say dare a nigga to say something to one of them niggas about smoking crack. That's how much money them niggas was getting. Louis Rankin was a crackhead, my nigga. 
They brought that nigga from Jamaica, quote unquote, to make dubs. The nigga Super Cat, God bless the dead, his brother named Dirt's man that got killed in flat. These niggas, that mother bitch, don't look, yo, them niggas is gangsters for real, my nigga. Junior Demons, that, oh, remember that song? Cabin something, what is the meaning of cabin stepping? Remember them niggas, Junior Demons and Shock? The niggas is all murderers, my nigga. Them reggae niggas is really serious, my nigga. Word up. That's a fact. That's a fact. I was there, bro. And I'm so grateful that I'm still here, bro. Niggas is gone, bro. I'm so grateful, man. You said that that spot was that that Irene Court shit was where? Right on the corner of Schenectady and Sterling. Mm. And did, right like, the what happened? What happened to it? Like after that five years, they ran down on that shit. Stephen Walsh from the America's Most Wanted came to the block. <laughs> a nigga by the name of Bobby. He was a fucking fan. This is yo, listen to me, son. This is true history. You know what the nigga Bobby told us? Because they wouldn't let us leave the game room that night. <clears throat> the reason why whoever was inside the stores or the game room that particular night, they wouldn't let them leave because the feds was raiding the buildings and a lot of the buildings was connected under the ground. You dig what I'm saying? These niggas bought up all the property. So a lot of the buildings, people fail to realize, these are how the niggas was getting away from the regular TNT, I mean, narcotics police because, like, say for instance, when you try to get into Joker's Wild, it was a door that was closed. You couldn't ram it because it was completely opposite so by the time you try to ram the door get the fork lift to pull it open these niggas don't went to the floor and came out the back in the middle of irene court everything was connected mm. y'all done seen them niggas torture niggas my nigga this is what they used to make us do they caught this nigga stealing one time right they got all the little niggas that was in the game room boy it's in the fucking crib so we don't know what the fuck is going on all i know is them big jamaican pots them shits is on the stove balling Hit a crackhead nigga in the back, they beating on him, he hollering, he butt ass nigga. That nigga say, yo, this what happened, niggas that violate us, yo. They brought the crackhead um Nancy in there to suck the nigga off. She sucks the nigga off. They open the bathroom door. They got hot water and hot water boiling in the bathroom coming up. They dip this nigga dick first, my nigga. I never heard a nigga scream like that, bruh. Like all jokes aside, man, the sores and everything that was on this man, son. Mm. Like the impressions that shit left in our mind. I know what it left in my mind. So did I run away from that shit? Nah, the next day I was right back on Schenectady and Sterling. My mother, God bless her soul, used to literally come to Schenectady and Sterling and beat me out the game room. What year was this? 89? No, 88. 88, 87. This is when I'm in the street, baby. I'm outside. DCEP, the Jamaicans. I'm becoming me. Then my mom told me one day, if you think you grown, leave my keys in the house. I got me a motherfucking, um, not an apartment. I was getting ready to tell you the lie. I got me a room at 1292 Pacific Street between New York and Brooklyn. I paid $55 a week for a room and I had to share the living room and the motherfucking bathroom and the kitchen. $55 a week. Word up, man. This is the beeper error, man. Shout out to all the supporters that be hitting up that Cash App, that Venmo, that PayPal, and be copping that merchandise off GemPop.store. Yerp. See, a lot of dudes be getting tight when they see me uploading repeats and re-uploading episodes. You feel what I'm saying? But you know what that is? That's non-subscriber problems. Because when you're subscribed to the actual channel, you know what I mean? You go on the channel and you see everything is neat and clean, bro. I got a whole playlist of just new and recent episodes. Then I got a playlist 50,000 and better views. Then it's the All Murder playlist, the All Saquon playlist, the L Famous playlist, the Wise playlist. You feel me? Then I'm working on this All Lads playlist. You know it's a million stories I got to add. All Shannon Briggs. When Chasing Your Eggplant Goes Wrong, Brooklyn Legacy Playlist, you heard? And the list goes on. New York State Prison, Rikers Island Legends, everything is neat and clean and in order, you heard? If you don't want to see nothing but the newest episodes, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you subscribe to that playlist, recent and new episodes only.